Friday do Dream Team. It's your favorite duo, Theory and Ann. McKenzie. Back with another reaction video, guys. And here we are with Friendly Jordy. Y'all know I rock with him. I don't know if you got a chance to react to him yet, have you? I don't think that I have. This is her first time. So here we are. You know you're Australian when? Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Jordy, what we got? Welcome back to Friendly Jordy's slow descent into becoming WatchMojo.com for Australia. We're doing another list with the word Aussie in it because it gets a little more views. And frankly, I'm very happy about that because we need to stitch Australian culture back into the minds of our youth. They've watched too much Joe Rogan. They think they live mm. there and just like, I don't care about anything unless it's freedom of speech or weed. No, you're Australian. <laughs> so I don't care about beer and sport, fuckhead. So we're just gonna do a little list to keep you rooted in the great southern land by reminding you, you know you're Australian when. <clears throat> You know you're Australian when you rear end a Toyota Hilux, the guy comes out and apologizes to you because your car is fucked. And his car Ooh. is better as a result of the collision. <laughs> it has slightly less cement dust on it. Now he doesn't have to go to Coles Express car wash. Owning a Toyota Hilux is the Australian equivalent of the Midas Touch story. Why must my happiness come at the expense of my fellow man? You know you're Australian when you're sitting at home with your reject shop fan, Peter Overton mm. comes on and says, and Sydney has endured another scorcher, 42 degrees. Peter, we all know that you're in a perfect 26 degree air conditioning environment all year round. You've never felt any variation of temperature. Take the backdrop of Sydney Harbour Bridge off of the green screen. Just expose it for what it is. If you left that studio even and went into Channel 9's offices, you'd be like a soft coral and bleach instantly. They'd have to transport Mark Ferguson from Channel 7 over in a fish bag to replace you. Now don't feed me too much. You know the dead giveaway of it is, Pete? Everyone watching you is in their underwear. You're in a suit. You know you're Australian when you're yeah, in one of- Yeah, if it was that high, oof. Yeah. And all I had was a little fan. I ain't had no air conditioning, just a little fan. Uh-huh. Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be attitudes. <laughs> We'd probably be arguing nonstop just because we hot. <laughs> yes. We'd be going at it. Because I would be a total B-word. <laughs> Let's just be honest. And I feel like <laughs> my patience would be- It would wear thin more quickly. And yeah. so, yeah, we probably start going out in a very hot environment. <laughs> One of those shitty food courts where the only thing that isn't a major brand name is some Chinese eatery. And on one of the middle food court tables is a bunch of pigeons going nuts because somebody ate seven eighths of their three piece feed. The women next to you work at Myra are disgusted because, mm, don't they have nuts? But you're disgusted because you're watching a scene from the road. Complete and utter anarchy over cannibalism. Can you imagine how awful a pigeon's life must be? The absolute best case scenario for a pigeon is the worst, most bleak environment that one of the most imaginative, celebrated writers of all time could possibly think of. It's oh just a bit God. of skin. We all agree. It's delicious. Is it worth clawing your best friend's eyes out over? You know you're a shallow with mum. It is to them, God dang it. To them it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you go low and you're excited because you think you're going to get a toy that is of worse quality plastic than most Chinese takeaway containers. And then all the colour from your face drains as she makes a last minute turn into the confectionery aisle and picks up a 12 pack of fun sized Twix. No mum, let's get it from Coles. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's going it to taste great. <laughs> It's <laughs> on nothing! And the five-year-old is right. For some inexplicable reason, it does taste worse. That's how you know you're Australian. Oof. It is a unique phenomenon to this country that mothers care less about the well-being of their children than bargains. You know you're Australian when you go to a house that has a sliding back door and there's some mangy dog really wanting to come inside. You say, yeah. oh, you got a dog. Now don't let him in, he's an outside dog. Which seems to be this legal loophole that the RSPCA in Australia can't get around because let's be honest, it is full-blown animal abuse. They never get taken for a walk because yeah. what, he's got toys out there? He can tire himself out? It's a fucking big backyard? It's a quarter acre block! Once I've heard that before. All right, they got enough yard back there. They don't need, yeah, they don't need to go for a walk. 
I've never taken my dog for a walk when I had a dog. I never once took it for a walk. I never had a dog. I play with it. I throw stuff. I play tug of war. I do all that. But I never put a leash on my dog and say, let's go for a walk. No, I had a turtle, a fish, and a hamster. (laughs) She killed all three of them. (gasps) I did not. Don't let him tell you that. (laughs) What happened to him? My turtle did die. But... To be fair, to he be was bad. not supposed to be in Georgia. He's supposed to stay in Florida what with his to, weather, what and it was to cold. The fish? the fish died the day that I got it. It was from Walmart. It was a gift, <laughs> and we all know that Walmart fish don't live. <laughs> and the hamster. And I cried, and then the hamster I gave away. And is now dead. Probably at this point, <laughs> I had it when I was a kid. <laughs> But I didn't kill it. It was alive when I gave it away. <laughs> oh, dude. Inf at best. You know you're in Australia when nobody in your family is of any traditional spiritual persuasion. The closest thing to that being your mum watches better homes and gardens. She learns a tip from it and then goes ape shit when no one else knows something that she didn't know a week ago. How many times do I have to <laughs> tell you to not put bananas with other fruits? It makes them rot faster. What is this continent where our L. Ron Hubbard is Joanna Griggs? You know you're Australian when you're 13, your best mate's sister's 15, Ooh. and you've had about 300 wanks thinking about her. You would no. saw three of your own limbs off just to see one tit for a couple of seconds, just as long as you got to keep old righty. And when you think about it later on, the only reason you were so obsessed with her is because she was there. And your mum's version of your best friend's sister is chefs on TV. Oh, I like me some Jamie. You know you're an Australian of everything. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, you got a crush on your friend's sister, maybe, but <laughs> 300 wanks just thinking of her? Nah, like, I'm not jacking out thinking of her. You feel me? We gotta talk later. Wouldn't do that. <laughs> we gotta talk later. <laughs> Fight you saw in high school that started with you and me, Nathan, at the Oval after school. Never eventuated into an actual fight. The only time it ever did was when it started with what's up, bro? What's up? What's up? And then one of them throws a punch, which at best is 20% of what they could actually do. That. Okay, okay. And then prepare to see boxing <laughs> in such poor form that it would make rock and sock and robots look like Delahoya v Mayweather. And always ends when they start bear hugging each other and one of them grabs the shirt, lifts it up to about here, at which point a male teacher with no hair will apparate like a wizard in Diagon Alley and say, Right, you two, principal's office, first thing Monday. Neither of them go. Of not even not. the teacher goes. He forgets. And finally, yep. you know you're an Australian if the overriding emotion that you feel on a daily basis, much like how Americans make everything seem much more important and amazing than it is, and British people seem to think that sarcasm is as important as oxygen. I bet in high school chemistry they taught, right, let's review the periodic table. Right next to hydrogen is David Mitchell. Australia's overall vibe is just this. Oh, shut up. Just a very angrily content continent. The coat of arms should just be folding arms. I'm all for changing the national anthem if the new song is entitled, hey, settle down. And it's the only national anthem on earth where it's impolite to stand. Everybody please fold your arms, slant back in your chair, and get a slightly furrowed brow for the national anthem. Everything here has this, if it's not broken, don't <laughs> fix it attitude. How about we get better hospitals? Well, why? These ones work. How about we have foreign mining companies not steal 80% of our resource wealth? How about you fuck off? Well, what do you want to do? I just want to sit here watching American pickers on 7 May stuffing me mouth until I buff with sayos and coon cheese. And if you so much as bring any of those poof kettle chips near me, I will crack your mouth shut. Smiths or neck yourself, cunt. So there you are, this is basically just a cheat sheet to the citizenship test. And if you are an Australian, do the Australian thing and give this video a like. There you go, the bare minimum. Please share and comment below. Comment. Uh, Freely Georgie's is my guy. That was a good video. <clears throat> we know what growing up in Australia is like now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We know if these situations happen, oh, 
they're Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all subscribe, read notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so you suggest it. We out.